Hey folks, it's been a while since I've done a video, so I thought for this week's blog post I would do another video tutorial. This time we're going to talk about how to think through designing an experiment to test your hypothesis. And as always, we're going to start with the handy dandy Lean UX Canvas, always a good place to start. Now I've put in some of the content in here already, so let's start with the, the business problem that we want to solve in this case. The problem that we're solving is that our in-house university offering kind of an, in, an in-house learning uh, curriculum was designed to help our employees stay up to date on current technologies and trends, as well as learn new skills to help them advance in their career. We've observed through system usage and completion rates, as well as employee feedback, that our course offerings aren't being viewed consistently nor used in improving staff performance. That's an issue for us. We need to fix that. Why? Well, it's increasing our costs in the learning and development department while not increasing internal promotions and leaving no impact at all, having no impact at all on employee retention and referral rates. So that's an issue for us. How might we improve the in-house learning offering so that every employee completes at least one course per quarter and at least 10% of our in-house promotions cite the impact of in-house learning. We want to see an impact on both of those things. So that's the problem that we are going to solve for today. Now, how might we solve for that? There's a, a lot of ways to do that. We're going to jump ahead to a hypothesis statement that I've written for this. And we've got other videos on how to write hypotheses. But we start with a solution hypothesis. We believe a 100% increase in the number of employees completing at least one course will be achieved if the staff in the technical product development organization, so we're gonna focus only on those for folks initially, learn something applicable, something they can, they can apply at work right away with an in-house learning and development podcast discussing the latest trends and topics and promoting the in-house learning tool. So the folks in lear learning and development are gonna to put together a podcast for the company <clears throat> to promote content, topics, etc., and they're hoping that that will drive traffic to the tool and get folks to take courses and feel like they're learning something applicable, okay? So that's the hypothesis that we want to test. Now, how do we design an experiment to test this particular hypothesis? Well, we're going to start with two questions. The first question and, and most important one is, what's the most important thing we need to learn first about this hypothesis? In other words, what are the risks inherent with this hypothesis? And to think through that, we're going to go through a couple of initial questions. So the L&D team is going to build a podcast. How might that fail, right? What are the various ways that that podcast idea, this hypothesis, might actually fail? Well, if you think through how, how that might fail, right, what are some ways? Well, um, uh, people won't listen. Right, people won't listen to to the podcast. That's one way it might fail. Uh, another way it might fail is the podcast team is inconsistent. So they make one, one a week, and then they stop making them for a couple of weeks, and they come back with another one. So that fails. Um, this might fail because um, yeah, you know the. Chief HR officer feels that the you know the L and D team has better things to do. That's a risk as well, right? So these are all the types of things that could cause this particular idea to fail. People won't listen. The podcast team is inconsistent. Um, uh, another risk could be that you know podcast quality could be low. Podcast quality could be very low. That's a risk that would break this. Um, and then ultimately, right, people listen, um, but not nothing changes, right? So let's, right, people, people do listen, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't drive traffic to the learning tool, to the learning offering, right? So that's the first step in deciding how to design an experiment. We look at our hypothesis and then we think through, okay, how might this fail? And so as we look at those risks, we have to identify the most important thing we need to learn first. Now, all of these are legitimate risks, but which one is actually going to break the, this, this hypothesis first, right? So people won't listen. The podcast team is inconsistent. 
like, as a team, you work together to decide which one of these you feel is the riskiest one to, to you know, and, and if it's a new idea, generally speaking, the feasibility of the idea isn't the biggest risk. It's usually, is there any value in the idea? And so if we're looking at value, we can uh, probably identify this. People won't listen to the podcast as the the biggest risk right now, the thing that we have to test first. That's the, that's the next step in the process. We identify the most important thing that we need to learn first. Now, what do we need to learn about that? If people won't listen to the podcast, right? What is it that we need to learn um, about that? Well, um, well, we could learn. We need to learn what kind of podcasts. You know, in, in this case, it's going to be our product development staff, right? Product development staff listens to. That's important for us to learn. Um, another thing that we might want to learn about, um, if people won't listen to it, is um, uh, do people listen to podcasts? Right? Do and, and when I say people, right? It's the the product development staff uh, listen to podcasts at all, right? That's that's something that we might need to learn as well. Uh, that may make them not listen to it. Um, <clears throat> what else? I think one thing we might want to learn is if they do listen to it, what topics uh, interest our staff? In this case, it would be podcast topics, right? At least three things that we would need to learn there, right? So that's what we're we're looking at there. Is is just to make sure that we've got uh, a sense of how to de-risk the thing that we need to learn first, right? So we're thinking about making this podcast. The biggest thing that we need to learn is that people won't listen to this podcast, and uh, or that this is the thing that might break it. And so, what do we need to learn about it? Do they listen to it? What kind of podcast do they listen to um, and what topics might interest them? Those are at least three things that we can think about. And so then um, <clears throat> of these things, we have to decide, well, what do we need to learn first? Right. I think I think the most important thing we need to learn first is do our staff, the people on our staff, even listen to podcasts at all? Because, again, value if they don't if, if they don't listen to podcasts at all, this whole thing is moot because we're never going to get anywhere. Right. So. Steps in defining our experiment. We've got a hypothesis. What are the ways that it might fail? What are the risks? Of those risks, which one is the one we have to deal with immediately? Usually it's, it airs on the side of value. Um, and then of those, uh, for that risk, what do we need to learn, right? What are the things that we need to learn right away? And the most important thing right now is do these folks even listen to podcasts, right? So um, once we've got a sense of what we need to learn, then the final question in designing the experiment is thinking through the question, well, how could we learn that? What's the least amount of work? What's the fastest, cheapest way that we could learn whether or not our product development staff listens to podcasts? And the way that we think about these experiments is in three time horizons. We think about them if we had a day, if we had a week, and if we had, uh, if we had a month, right? That's the way that we're gonna look at this stuff. So for example, let me get rid of these. We'll do another, right? If we had a day, one day, what might we do? What, what, how might we test that? Well, what could we get done in a day to, to, to learn whether our product development staff listens to podcasts? Well, one thing we could do is we could walk around the office and ask them, right? Walk around the office and just spend a day saying, hey, do you listen to podcasts? Do you listen to podcasts, etc." We could do that in a day and learn pretty quickly, right? If we had a week, what could we do? Let's assume that we've got a lot of folks, a big company, right? It's maybe several thousand product development folks. Um, what could we do in a week, right? In a week, well, we could spend a little bit more time, a little bit more effort. We could uh, send out a survey to the staff about podcasts and see who they, uh, who listens, how many people listen, what they listen to, et cetera. <clears throat> that starts to give us a, a, a slightly larger amount of data slightly larger amount of effort and, uh, and you know, more or less confidence in whether or not we should actually do this, right? So that's our second experiment. And as we look at our at kind of a third time box, right? If we had a month, what could we do in a month? In a month, you know, we could probably, you know, build out a podcast landing page, you know, sign up page and, and see if folks will actually 
you know, show up and, and, and say, hey, I'd like to learn more about this podcast and send it out to folks and spend a month promoting it and see if people will actually say, yes, I'd like to know when this podcast comes out. I'd like to know when this podcast comes out. And that starts to give us a bit more data. Now, what's interesting, right, is very, very quickly, we were able to get down to three very actionable experiments that can give us something in the short, medium, and longer term, three different types of efforts. So what we did, again, just to kind of take, take you through the process, we had a problem to solve. We then wrote a hypothesis, a solution hypothesis for that problem. Now, the solution hypothesis we came up with was a podcast, in this case, an in-house podcast. And we identified right, all the various ways that this could fail. Right? People won't listen to it. It's inconsistent, et cetera. And we were trying to decide which experiment to run first. Generally speaking, with a new idea, we want to make sure that there's value in the idea. And so we're going we're gonna to look at that risk first, that people will show any interest in this thing. In our case, people won't listen to the podcast. Great. Well, if they're not going to listen to it, what do we need to learn about that? Well, do, do they listen to podcasts today? What kind do they listen to? What topics interest them? All right. So we're looking at those risks. And again, erring on the side of value. Do people even like this kind of channel for this type of content delivery? And how might we find out? And the interesting thing is when you take this three time box approach, it really forces you to think very lean in the short-term experiments. If we had a month, well, if we had a month, we could probably build out a landing page, take signups, maybe reach out to some folks. If we had a week, right, less time, probably get a survey out. But if we had to learn something today, right, if we had to learn something uh, today, right, we could walk around the office and just ask them about that. And that's, that'll give you some data points today. And so in this way of thinking gets you down to a uh, tactical experiment that you can run immediately, right? We start with the bigger time frame, work our way down to the shorter time frame, and all of a sudden we've got a concrete experiment that we can run. Okay. I hope that was helpful and we'll talk soon.